So welcome to the second in our series of watercolor techniques, the basic techniques that are fundamental to achieving success. Today we're going to talk about two particular techniques. One, softening of edges. And secondly, we're going to talk about the amoeba, fundamental shape. So um, I wanted to start by showing that when we have, as we do in this illustration, complete sharp edges, all the edges hold attention. And of course the rectangle or whatever it is comes out because of that. But then when we move to soften the edge, I'm hoping that you're seeing, when you focus, that your eye more strongly focuses on the sharper of the edges. The reason this is fundamental is that really What's happening in nature is that we have volumes. We're looking at trees or cars or whatever, people, and there is a volume. And there is a changing of value. In order to achieve the volume in watercolor, we need to soften one of the edges. So we'll talk about how to do that. Mixing paint again in our round circle. Working with indigo again. Putting it down. And I'm going to do two bands and demonstrate. The softening of the edges moves us to a second roll for the brush. What I've just done is the first roll of the brush. Painting. That's what we think of normally when we think of watercolor. Painting with the brush. But the brush also is a mop. If we think of it as a kitchen mop, and we vigorously wring the mop out in water, one, two, three, and wring it out, we end up having a thirsty brush that will pick up the dirt and the remaining water that's already on the floor. So I will demonstrate the softening technique by moving down the edge and taking it and removing it to the paper towel. And so we are wringing, up the, wringing out the mop and lifting paint and moving towards a softer edge. The soft edge is not done until it totally disappears. That allows the other edge to rise. If it's not too dry, let's make it wetter again. This will be the way not to make a soft edge. What this is doing is moving the paint from one place to another, but it won't be, it'll take much longer to achieve a soft edge in that direction. I call this crossing the edge or petting the cat. It's mindless activity, but it doesn't really get us the job done because we end up with additional hard edges. So in order to soften an edge, we have to move along, A-L-O-N-G, along the edge and overlapping just slightly and using our paper towel as our second tool until the edge value disappears. Theoretically, we want to do this as quickly as possible so that when the paint is down, it's difficult when it's sharp. But if we ch change it to a thirsty brush, try not to spread the paint, but lift it where it is. We're not doing it like a graded wash. It's a small version of graded wash done in a very limited space. And so we end up with soft edges, a building stone. One more time, possibly in a different color to show that it's done everywhere. Vigorous, rinsing the brush and lifting the paint by going in just slightly at the edge, making the brush thirsty and having the edge disappear and so we end up with a soft edge. If the edge comes back, which is often the case, even with the best of intentions, we can go back and do a little more work. If we leave red on the brush, it'll turn purple for us. But we can lift as long as the, the paint is reasonably damp. There's another way to go. When the, when the edges are really strong and now dry, as the first two are here, we can soften the edges by using the scrubber. So there's a tendency for paint, especially when painting outdoors, to dry quickly. 
And so scrubbing the edge with lots of water and medium pressure. Repeat that because it's important. Lots of water, medium pressure, and scrubbing again along the edge versus across. We're not petting the cat, we're going across and we can lift and the edge begins to soften. This is now again for dry paper when we've forgotten or it's gotten dry on us while we've done other things. And so a scrubber brush, one of the brushes in the arsenal, is what we're now demonstrating. But repeating, you need lots of water, two, three, and four visits to the, to the well of water, clean, fresh water. And we move only back and forth. Again, we're not going across the edge. That's being the edge. We're not crossing it. We're going along it. Pretty mandatory, easy to forget. It'll take a while to get used to it, but we can always soften edges. So there we have it for a basic tenet of softening edges. I'm going to now move to the second part of this demonstration called working with amoebas. And I'm going to drop the paper down without drying. And I'll demonstrate um, this technique, uh, which will be used for almost anything. We'll do two or three versions of this today. This technique is used to add texture and interest to any other surface, to the side of a barn, to grass, to a cloud, to the face of cheek on somebody's portrait. And it's done by this, this way. We're finding a position on the paper, not in the middle, but somewhere off to one of the edges, thinking about um, putting medium pressure with the brush. And this is with pure water, leaving and consciously leaving the centerpiece white. We'll show you this more and we'll demonstrate a couple of times. And I'm thinking of a cluster. I'm not doing big jumps between parts. I'm building on what I put down, but purposely changing the pressure on the brush. And I'm usually using a star-like motion, not a pinwheel, of moving out from a center, but not only that, but largely that. Okay, and then sometimes less water and sometimes more. So we've got water down. The next end, while it sits into the paper, let's do this one in red. We will mix some red paint. We want to make the paint reasonably thin in this case. And so I'm going to do three, four, five to get down towards the one or two percent milk at the far end of the scale. So we have th all three, the primary, the whole milk, and the thin. So I'm going to start with thin, and I'm going to use now a new hold with the brush. Let's pick up those pieces. I'm going to put it down like a breadcrumb when you're going to a fancy restaurant and moving the brush, making a stroke that's not predictable because I'm trying to scrape the whole brush along. And then I'm building again, just like before, from that group, going back for some whole milk, slightly darker, starting in a new place, moving out, building on it, out we go, and turning the paper so I can work comfortably. Breadcrumb hold, build on it, out we go. Breadcrumb hold. When we're done, we have something like at least a third of the paper, not half, a third of the, uh, two thirds of the paper with some impact of color. We're claiming the paper. And you can see it becomes in interesting patterns. The next step is to introduce what we just talked about, softening the edges. Vigorous rinsing of the mop. One. Around we go, one, two, three, getting the tip of the water off. And the exterior, not the center, but the exterior edges are the ones that get softened. And want most, if not all, of the exterior edges to be softened. It means, again, going along the edge till it fades away to being invisible. There's an edge, exterior, around we go, clean the brush, soften again so it disappears. Exterior edges get soft. Not the interior. Leave some hard edges in the middle. And so we want a shape that's not like a star. It's an unpredictable shape. Maybe it happened in space. A galaxy kind of explosion. Very unpredictable. With most of, if not all of, the exterior edges. 
One next thing to do with this exercise is to drop in some additional color. This would be something moving towards heavy cream and where it's already dark, darken it slightly by charging another technique with the brush. That's wet paint into wet paint. This is a little bit darker. Let's darken just a bit of that in a cluster too. Go back and charge that one once more. We got mom and we got pop and let's do baby. Little one. Now we have interest. We have all of this range and I'm noticing that it's setting up here at the edge so a little more work still can be done and softening the exterior edges. And there we are. So I'm going to dry this starting quite high. We'll hope the dryer engine won't ground you out and then we'll move to the next step. So the next step is, I have found uh, a couple of images of tomatoes. And the red is advisable, because that's the primary color here. Let's say that we're doing, let's do just a single tomato So for this exercise. So I have a shape that's essentially round with an interesting star piece on the top of it. So rather than putting the tomato right in the middle, I'm going to turn this and look a couple of different ways and decide where. And I'm going to end up, I think, placing the tomato right there. Using an R movement and just creating a circle. So let's um, review where we've been. We've created a <clears throat> painted amoeba. And how did we get there? First, we put water down, not in the center of the paper. We made sure that there wasn't excessive amount of water, that it was in a star-like pattern, and that it alternated between dry and wet to get as much variety as possible. Once that was done, we got our red paint and used the breadcrumb hold for craziness and created groups of paint moving out in a star-like way from the center, an amoeba-like way. The shape we ended up with was um, anything but a circle, rectangle, star. No geometric shape. And we softened the exterior edges wherever we could with the mop-like brush, changing the brush from a paint delivery system to a mop. And then we can, when it gets dry if needed, use our scrubber, which is with lots of water, and along the edges, if they come back on us, and with paper towel, we can soften the edges so that there's no exterior, or very few at least, exterior edges that are hard. We've ended up then with an amoeba with soft edges, and we've ended up drawing our tomato that we've referenced onto the painting. Next, we're going to begin painting again starting specifically with the color that's already there. So we're going back to the same color scheme with whole milk, <clears throat> heavy cream, and skim milk. But we're not painting the tomato. This becomes a another of the surprises in this technique. We're going to paint around the tomato. This in some version is called negative painting. I'm also going to paint around the petals of the stem of the tomato. And so, we're going for heavy cream, but we're painting where there's already paint. Painting where there's already paint. As a starting place, it may not be all that we do, but we're painting around, and we don't leave it as an outline, but we added bubbles around as we go. And painting in between, it'll be difficult maybe for you to see this, in between the petals of the leaf leaves and around we go. And changing the brush <coughs> into excuse me into a mop by vigorously washing it, rinsing the water out and touching your brush, we again then soften the exterior edges of that paint that we've just placed down before going on too much further so it doesn't get dry for us. And around we go and magically the tomato 
is starting to appear. We want to make sure it's nice and round, as tomatoes want to be. We want to turn it so that our work works, uh, is visible to us, and that we can do it with comfort, keeping our pencil hold with the brush and moving around, painting where there's already paint. And around we go, around petals and green and tomato. We're not painting any of those things for now. And again, change the brush to a mop, thirsty brush in other terms, so that the outside edges are again softened. Always the exterior edges and don't forget to do it. Otherwise it steals from the tomato itself. Okay. Around we go. And we're going along, not across the edges. A reminder. Along versus across. Along the edges. And soften so it totally disappears. And if we need to, resort to in this case the small scrubber and soften even more of the edges and paper towels can work to help but we're ending up having the tomato arise we look at it for uh, comfort we want to make one piece maybe slightly larger and with the brush and again soften the exterior edges so our tomato is arising out of the seam, and maybe with that, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll do the hair dryer, and uh, once dry, we'll come back to you. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on, I'm going to a smaller brush because we're going to the stems, and we'll make with blue paint and yellow paint. We'll make um, ourselves some green for the stems. So into the center, and this can be done reasonably casually. Round brush, circular motion, turning the brush in our fingers. Adding yellow paint to blue. And we'll be turning this into green. Okay, and we're going to darken the green on one edge by adding more blue. So we have dark green and light green. Then we'll have these at our command, and in we go. And let's start by painting the stem. Darker. And maybe even with a little blue. Okay. And with yellow green. Adding just a bit of color and accent to softening the edge so we have a color range from dark to light in each of the stems. Now we're going to paint one within the tomato. And adding more. Painting right over the red in this case and darkening, going to heavier cream and a little piece and the final petal. Mixing greens. Important to have more than one green at hand. And around we go, out and in. Getting those shapes to work. Looking for places to darken it just slightly and going for even darker and maybe making the stem just a bit bigger and darker green okay. now we can come back in and darken other parts of it because paint always dries lighter so we can darken some portions of the stem so we have this business of dark to light on each of the petals, dark to light. Okay. 
So we are ending up having a tomato. We can dry the stems, but uh, because we're not going to work in that area exactly again, we're going to add just one more dimension to this painting. And that is we're going to add a little bit of surface painting on the tomato. I've noticed in our model that there's a bit of additional darkness and lightness in various places. And so I'm going to add the darkness now by adding just a little bit of color to the red, making it slightly darker. And I'm going to put some down. This is another amoeba now. By putting some color down and just expanding its surface and again, as before, softening the edges. Around we go. And so we're creating a darker cheek. Knowing that that's going the right direction, we'll add to it slightly. It is purpley, blue and red combination. And adding just a bit more at the bottom. And soften the edges of the amoeba always. And maybe correct the edge for the perimeter so it's just a little bit of additional roundness. Let's do that part. And one more thing. We come in with the scrubber and again lots of water. Where we have the white spaces predetermined by the amoeba earlier, we're going to expand them slightly and make them softer. Not unlike the soft parts of the tomato in these locations. So we're making it slightly bigger. Remembering lots of water and at the edge of the already round piece so that the sharpness goes away. And we're going to lift with the paper towel so that we end up having a soft edge. So we're going to soften some of the edges within the tomato that weren't previously softened. And so we end up with a tomato. One last thing is to come back in and darken the darkest places. So I usually say to students, darken the darks. Don't add darkness in additional places. We're darkening where it's already dark. And so we're repeating the amoeba of negative painting of a minute ago. So that the tomato has even greater presence in the painting. And we'll do that on the other side as well, turning the work so that we can see it and darkening the darks. That's dark, we'll darken the darks, darken the darks. And then soften the edge. Don't go in the paint, but just work at the edge. And soften edges. And if we need to, we can also add additional darkness on the cheek of the tomato inside. Because painting has a tendency to, to um, dry lighter. Watercolor has a tendency to dry lighter. Red and purplish. Okay. And soften the edges. So repeating what we have just done is painted around our subject with darker paint having painted fairly light at the beginning. We've added our dark stem and we've touched a little bit of surface where the darkness and the lightness was and we've used the scrubber to create soft patches of light within the tomato. This technique can be used in all kinds of other versions. Earlier today we took our favorite lure, our silver flatfish that we fished with for already 30 or 40 years. Drawn the simple lure, but we did the same technique before adding the lure to the scene. We did an amoeba, drew the lure, painted around the lure, added other things like plants and trees, and created underwater composition for a lure. 
This can be done for all kinds of subjects, fruits and vegetables and others, in a barn that we'll do in a minute. But one can imagine, and we'll show you closer versions of this shortly, all kinds of ordinary fruits and vegetables becoming very interesting paintings based simply on the technique of the wild and crazy amoeba drawing the subject, painting around the subject, and lightly rendering the subject. The thing that's important is the subject itself is generally lighter than the surroundings, so it comes forward, whether it's a pea or a peach or a beet or a pear, comes forward of the darker surrounding. And that happens for each of these versions. We'll move then to the last version. I've looked at this very simple barn, and in this case, I've drawn the barn ahead of time onto the piece of paper. We're going to do a couple of amoebas in this case. And what we'll start with is a sky. And so in a, a sky amoeba allows us to put some water down, pure water preferably, and we're doing it as a cluster again and working out. And then while it sits into the paper, looking anywhere for our, for our blue, it would work, creating a whole, a whole milk version of blue. And with our breadcrumb hold again, going to make a sky into the water. So we're doing it not only behind the barn, but maybe onto the barn a little bit and across, but it's on the upper part of the painting. Make our brush into a mop change our, our mop into uh, a dry, thirsty brush, and only the outside edges do we soften. Again, we turn the paper for our own work, and the comfort of holding our hand down steady in the pencil grip, and going along the edge, not across. The temptation is to cross it, but try not to do that, and we're going along the edge. But let's not take long strokes. Let's leave some sharp edges and soften others for greater interest. And where it's darkest, we'll go back in and add additional darkness. This is again charging with additional paint and a spot. And we let it touch and the space between the touches is important. And it's again done as a grip, group, pop, darkness, mom, and baby. So we surround the subject. We can clean the brush. We'll do the hair dryer and come back in a minute. Using the mid-sized brush, we'll go to browns and produce over the barn some other water amoeba. wild and crazy, and then we'll produce a couple of different browns, mix them while the paint settles in, and again, an alternative brown. So we have a couple of places to go. Always important to have more than one color at your command, maybe even a third a little bit, or a fourth. Okay, so in this water, Starting with a mid-color, craziness for the barn, go in this color, pull it out, and create another amoeba. So we're painting both on and off the barn, and maybe a little bit of the roof. So we have warmer color for the ground plane, but it's done wild and crazy, and we might even do it in strokes of grass, whatever. So we've claimed the paper. And again, I'll dry it. Well, first of all, we'll soften the edges on the exterior from the center, away from the center. Soften the edges. Easy to forget doing that. Soft edges, not the internal. They stay sharp. And we'll dry. So essentially what we've done is claimed the paper with what might be called local color with some interest in the amoeba-like form. If we forget to soften some edges, as I've done here, easy enough with the scrubber, now that it's dry, 
to go along those edges and with the paper towel to lift and so they're softer. But internally we want to keep the sharp edges. Next step, not unlike the tomato of a minute ago, we're going to paint around the subject with slightly darker versions of the paint we've already used. And so I'm going to paint where there's already paint around the barn. If it flows into the barn, that's going to be okay. That was a little bit wet, but no problem. And around the barn. And clean the brush to make it a mop. Thirsty, touch the paper towel. And then along, going only slightly in, along those outside edges. So that the only edge that's showing up is the one next to the barn. Doing the same thing with the paint above, the colored paint from above. We're going to paint next to the barn around the subject. We're trying not to do this only as an outline. This would be an outline. And this is the bulb bulb that I always add at the end of the outline, making use of the paint on the brush, so that when I go around the exterior edge, leaving that little white space was important for interest and variety, I'm going along the exterior edges of the bubble, not only the outline. We keep turning the paper so we can see our work and softening the outline. Back we go to warmer darker version of the warm color and we'll move it out to make the barn appear a little more strongly. Soften the edges immediately. So it's a mantra becoming starting to happen. Paint and then soften. Because this didn't get quite dry we'll dry it a bit more. And then we'll come back in with additional and darker yet paint around the edges to reinforce the notion of it being a barn. The barn is now lighter than in the original scene. Softening the external edges, maybe wrapping the corner and softening the edges. Wrapping the corner and then softening the edges. So the barn is beginning to appear. In this case we had deeper and darker value in the internal part of the barn. So we can go to very dark paint in this case. Back to our indigo and we can begin to paint that piece, but this would be with heavy cream and across and one side would be bigger than the other and across we go moving towards the brown paint in the foreground and creating an opening through the barn. Next step, need to soften that edge a little bit so this edge rains. We can add additional darkness on the edge that's likely to be in shadow or in shade. Going from darker, not quite done, to lighter. And then we can do the same thing for the front, each piece at a time. From darker, so we are doing section by section on the barn. 
I'm going to work again in the darker shadowy section of the barn going from dark to light reinforcing that range from dark to light so that the top part is darker I'm going to work with my window shade technique and pull it down so that the bottom part is lighter the same thing is going to happen with the roof we might change the color a little bit on the roof but we'll do the darker piece at the bottom and we'll move towards the lighter at the top where there's likely to be more light so dark top of the roof in shadow but lighter okay then so we have that section done we'll do this next section even though this will be lighter than the shadowy side we have two or three different gray, uh, browns mixed we'll start with a darker version of the brown bisection and move across the painting and moving without adding paint but just with water moving this graded wash across the front of the barn and moving so that we essentially are adding no paint at the bottom right taking time to dry we'll now add the background Back to our scene, the horizon line gets emphasized through the building. So we're going to pull a blue-brown combination, starting with the darkest at the building and moving out horizontally, creating interest that could be trees, and moving it lighter as we move out so it reinforces the building. Even darker yet on the other side where it's in the shadow, but we'll do it and we'll move out towards lighter at the edge and inside across the opening of the, of the building again some additional darkness and get it to be just right in terms of its value light and dark okay So we beginning to see that the, the building, then we talk about painting the surface of the barn. In this case, we've done a smaller barn, of course. Uh, these are vertical lines, best done in the pencil grip. So we're moving from what's most comfortable to you from right to left or left to right, depending on your handedness. I'm not adding more paint, but I'm adding vertical boards with thin little white spaces between them. So we're adding some texture on the surface. Again for this side some texture on the surface but we need to do this lighter because this is the lighter side. And we leave the white space pure white. Same for the upper section And as much as anything, this is demonstrating the technique for rendering dark to light in each case, darker. Take some paint away, lighter, and then lighter without adding paint as we move across. Be deliberate with the strokes starting and stopping so that we have the scale. So we're beginning to see how that becomes a scene. So repeating what happened here, We'll add just a bit more at the ground plane. We'll add some grass. And these are just little vertical strokes and lines. And they want to be reasonably dark. And so we can darken just a bit of them, not all of them. Add a few others. And we can begin to see how For scale, we make the foreground ones taller, grasses, so we end up at the barn, smaller ones, 
smaller ones. So we end up with a whole scene of the barn being painted. Uh, we can do some interesting things by adding a board or two or adding something into the scene that's also in shadow. And we can have a board or two. And uh, enough not to, just to create interest in the zone. So the idea of the amoeba can be used for any subject. Lure, fruit, vegetable, barn, building, tractor, car, person, anything can happen by creating variations on this business of putting water down first, claiming the paper, creating an amoeba shape with soft edges, and then building and painting negatively around the subject, and only at the end, painting the subject itself. Thank you.